Whoa, it's Wolsey. Welcome back to the 12 creations of Christmas. This is day number seven. Yesterday, I did the time gauntlet. Now it's time to move on to the crystal gauntlet. Just to recap, we got fire, my favorite part. Ice, this transition's cool. I think this is still my least favorite. We got the poison part, the shadow part, which I always forget about because it's just electric. Yeah, this is definitely my least favorite. Never mind. Then we have the lava section at the drop. And last time, we made this time section, which is supposed to be like a time machine reactor kind of thing. I think it is one of the most interesting things I've ever built. I'm not gonna lie. Then somehow we've got to transition from here into a crystal section. And I've got a few ideas of how I could kind of follow on. Okay, we're gonna put an invisible cube portal right here. It's gonna make a little segue with some pads and portals. As this pad is hit, the moving group 431 that we used in the previous part needs to fade off. The colors already fade. All that's left is this tick in hand and that can just fade off afterwards to kind of fill up this black space. I think I'm gonna make a robot section for the next part. I think everything's gonna transition into a robot, but first I want to give the pads and the portals their own groups. So they can fade on one at a time leading up into the section. So lining up triggers directly above these objects and then I'll select them all and move them back. Just need to make sure these are initially zero. That's kind of smooth. Okay. I got to figure out what I'm doing with the blocks right now because I want to bunch them up a lot. So I need the design like set in stone before I even consider that. Going to use light purple and light pink, I think. How does this stack with blending? Oh, it goes to white. Okay. That's weird. Half opacity maybe. And then we can add something else on top. Maybe some glow that can have half opacity as well on that object blending. I'm also going to add a 3D line on the bottom that's on black above all of that. And then also a glow object that can kind of sit above. I'm also going to put a block on the inside on T2 that can be blending as well, maybe, but full opacity. But instead of being on the 242 half opacity, I'm going to give this object group 476, which is going to be half opacity, but it's going to have changes in it mid part so I can add pulses and stuff. For example, right here, I can add 476 to an alpha trigger with a 0.1 fade time to full opacity and then immediately fade it back down to 50. And you see what that does? The 16 beats, we put one trigger on the first, then one on the last, copy paste it 14 times. So when they're all selected, there's 16 of them, then we align to the X, nice. Okay, cool, we have our pulsing object there now. Delete this platform I made and make a slightly bumpier one instead. I can also add some spikes that are on four and four with that group two. Well, not the number two, but that group comma two. Okay, I'm also gonna stack some jump pads with themselves. Also gonna put a gigantic orb right here on like B2 or something behind all the blocks. Then there's gonna be a platform that you blatantly need to jump on. Okay, nice. There's a huge dash orb here now, which leads onto a giant purple pad, which will put you back on course. Spider portal. Gonna put a bunch of cube portals right here. I think that's kind of cool, right? You'll notice that none of these structures actually extend downwards. That's because these are going to be the objects that line the tops of the objects, you know? Around the alpha triggers, there's going to be a pulse that makes the object blending go to this light pink, and there's going to be another pulse for the pink blending to actually go purple instead. And that's going to be a couple of blocks before each alpha trigger. It doesn't have to be too precise because of the fade times. I might make it go black for the wizard wizard. Oh, okay, cool. Then every beat, I might try a light yellow on some of the objects just to kind of link that to the previous part. And it looks cool. I just like the color yellow with neon, man. I think it looks sick. It looks golden. But I also want to add some black glow that kind of obscures it a little bit on T2. Don't fade, don't enter. And these can be on different groups. These can be 477 to 479, I guess. This isn't going to be visible all the time. I'm just making some alpha trigger loops. And it's not even going to be fully opaque either. 477 to 479 are initialized as zero. 477 can fade up to like 0.75 in a second and then fade off immediately after. Then five blocks later, 478 can do the same. And 479. There we go. Gives it a kind of mystique mysterious gloomy looking vibe around some of the edges right there makes it look a lot cooler I read a comment the other day about these big pulsing circles that I've been using and about how I should click the randomize start button Thank you Ninkaz for that I'm gonna do it for this part over here as well because apparently it makes it look a lot better Oh, it does it does look so much better. I always thought this object was a beach ball but it's definitely not. It's actually a bubble, right? If I put that on black blending and four on the detail, we get a cool outline and that's gonna pop, but we can probably make a background out of that in all honesty. Set it to black blending on both the base and the detail. I added a new moving group that locks to the x-axis at the portal. Needs a unique group 481. We're gonna copy paste it every single block. So that's one row, then I copy paste, give it a new group. We just keep doing this. So we get a very simple sweeping pulse effect from bottom to top. Might as well go all the way to 500 with this. Then I'm probably going to copy paste this, flip it upside down and flip it horizontally. I'm going to set up my pulses for each group with a 0.05 and 
one second fade out. Every block will have that pulse trigger increment by one. No, not everything. Actually, that could look fire. Give me a second. I want to test this. No. <laughs> Let me decrease the fade time on this. That low key looks kind of cool. Let me just check the detail only. This is what I had in mind, and it's going to be a lot less messy. Yeah, that's probably the best way to do it. Towards the end, it's 0.94 plus on the saturation. So you can see at the beginning, it goes to white when it all stacks. But when everything's saturated, it can't go to white. So it's just pure color. Okay, there's going to be two different copies of this. One of them is the horizontal on editor layer 4. And the other one is on editor layer 5. And that is the vertical. They have different groups. And my plan is for the beginning to just have horizontal until the wizard wizard to immediately be turned back off. Then right before the spider, I want them to swap over. Ooh, I like the sync there. That's actually really cool. And then it swaps super cleanly. I love that. For this to even have a chance of working in with the dark end of the blocks that I've got and the black glow around them, I need to add some black underlay blocks. Not blocks. I think I'm going to scale up some fireballs. I know it sounds a bit crazy, but I'm going to scale hack these to about 4.6-ish. Stack them on top of each other with a flip like that. And you'll see that they kind of look like ground spikes. Plus, they are animated. So if I put them on B3, don't fade, don't enter. And just have them in like pillars underneath the blocks. I'll put them like six blocks apart from each other and just kind of space them out inside and you can see it kind of lets some of the background through which is cool kind of important for the big blocks not just to have massive black spaces underneath because that's how stuff looks empty there's good empty and there's bad empty and that's definitely bad empty i'm gonna quickly check the hit boxes on them though because it could be pretty risky yeah see it's all just red circles underneath the block so it works as an obstacle anyway i think i'm gonna scale the background up further using something called absolute scaling which centers the scale around each individual object and instead of the whole thing collectively. So what if I scale this up to something like 24 times so it goes super pixelated? See, I love the way that looks with the white. All the color gets drained away. If we make it a tiny bit smaller, that could look sick. 21 times scale objects. I think it looks good. I'm gonna keep it. <laughs> I'm probably also gonna make a pulse for the black color channel to make it colorful, like right there. So I guess for every block that the fireball pillars intersect with, I can just have this black glow underneath. Cool. Okay, this is looking a lot better. The objects have way more clarity than before. This is nice. Before I made the background, which is like the brightest thing on planet Earth, my original plan was to have a bunch of 1.9 style crystals in the background. I'm still going to try that. These objects need the moving group 480 and they need a unique group, which I've set as 503 for the group that's going to move them towards the player, basically. Then I'm going to make two sides to the diamond, which is going to be brighter in the middle, slightly darker on the left side, and then a lot darker on the right. Okay, I'm going to scale this up to two times. There it is in the background. Maybe going to level down the color channel that I set to copy number four. These objects are going to have to go on B3, which is risky. There we go. So you see the crystals behind. I'm going to scale up a sparkle object to sit on top of it as well. I'm also going to give these crystals their own unique group because I want them to wiggle up and down. Okay, so eight blocks apart, they're going to have unique groups. This object can go minus 30. And then after that movement, we can set another move trigger about 10 blocks before the edge. You see with the duration lines to so go up double. And then we need to repeat that movement but negative and then we just keep copy pasting the whole set and adding one to the group three blocks later then how's some rock decoration gonna work on some blending maybe four and two this could be low opacity in the back just hopefully to add some depth in the background and i've also added some opacity changes for group seven up and down i don't think it really makes a difference i think this looks fine okay then i'm gonna put some star decoration just above the places you need to jump I'm gonna layer these up with a bunch of different colors because it's cool then i'm gonna put some low opacity pulse circle objects with less speed and a randomized start. Although I don't want it to be 0.1. That's way too slow. I guess we'll just put one second. I don't know. Then since the start is randomized in all of them, it should look like it's emanating. Yes, dude. Then I'm just going to put a white arrow inside some just to make the stars feel a bit more in place. Okay, here we have day seven of our gauntlet level. My goodness, this part is no longer my favorite. Thank the Lord. This part is grown on me. I don't know whether it's just the people telling me it's good. Or I don't know. I really don't know. This whole thing, this whole series, this whole level is just a mess. This will never grow on me. This always will suck. There's a lot of depth to this part, but it's not as colorful as the rest, so it feels kind of lame in comparison to the next two. I do kind of feel like the drop gets more climactic as it goes on, which is nice. Don't know how I'm supposed to build in the magic part to feel crazier than this, but sure. Man, that's almost a minute long. Wait, it is a minute long according to the level. I don't know, man. That level is... It's blowing me away. I surprise myself every day. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Day 7 of the 12 Creations of Christmas. It's been a week already. I'm dying. Check the links in the description. Leave a like and subscribe. And have a good day.